I need to create a, a ride, a journey, a odyssey where people can go through different stages and meet different people of the village. I wrote a story before I wrote the album. A group of people, they leave where they're from in search of higher learning and seeking peace, which we're all doing some kind of way through our life. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business. I am your host, Rohan Patra, the rap music plug at your service. Here we are again. As a long-standing champion for the music from today's guest, it's been such a rewarding experience to witness the growth and display of incredible artistic vision found on Temple Needs Water, Village Needs Peace, a new collaborative album by Real Badman and Luca. This highly conceptual record left such a mark on me, providing brilliant lyricism that is absolutely moving and dazzling with its wondrous musical palette. Luca joins the show today to illustrate how him and Real Badman crafted what I believe is his magnum opus and one of the front runners for album of the year. The Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV is the remedy to the I don't have anything good to listen to problem. Through in-depth artist interviews, album reviews, and general rap commentary on the best that the underground rap scene has to offer, this is your one-stop shop to knowing what to add to your queue, play next, or pop into your record player. Welcome to the show. Luca, how are you doing today? Well, it's peace over here, man. I'm doing real good. How about yourself? I'm great. I'm great. It's a great day. Had a I had a jerk chicken sandwich today. Very yeah. just feeling very pleased. I had loaded biscuits and gravy this morning. That's all I had. Um uh, turkey sausage and eggs. It was crazy. Mm. <laughs> so that sounds I'm awesome. doing pretty good. Yeah. And you got the new album out, Real Bad Man. Temple needs water, village needs peace. Like this is I've been blown away with like everything from how it was rolled out, the presentation of the, you know, the promo videos. It feels very like regal. Like I use that word regal. It's like it very much reflects the music, which I think is like your most ambitious album so far. There's a real kind of like lyrical heft and impressive level of like just consistency with like how you're staying on the themes that you're exploring on this album and it really feels like a story and it reminds me of uh the fact that you were you recorded this album i understand at the same time or like within the same block of time as permanently blackface right we were done with this album and um so temp we were done with temple last year mm -hmm. so um I called Batman. I said, "So, do you think do you think we're gonna have it out this year? Because originally we wanted it to to um, end last year. Uh, we wanted it to be on last year, Temple Needs Water. So when he was like, "Man, let's hold off and let's wait, put more attention, put more behind it, and all of that." So I hit him. I was like, "All right, cool. I gotta drop something this year because I didn't drop nothing. I was I was planning on dropping Temple." Mm -hmm. So. Um, I told I told Hollow I was like man, I said bro we gotta knock something out in a week, and so um, and he was like you think we could do it? I was like yeah I mean I'm 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 feeling it, and then I I just hit up all the producer homies. I was like yo I need I need a beat. They sent me two one or two beats, and whatever beat they sent I was like yo that's going on there because I'm 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 never too worried about them sending me some whack shit you know what I'm saying so. I didn't really have to cipher through any beats, mm -hmm. what they sent. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I used, and um, that's what um my beat that I that I um produced on Premier League Blackface. That was the first run at that. That was actually my first time putting drum sounds to a beat using my MPC one. Nice. So um, yeah. So um, yeah, man. We we cooked that up in a week, maybe like a week and two days, because uh, I know I wrote it within like four or five days and we recorded it and then he had to mix and master it, which took another extra two days. So the entire recording and writing process and having all the homies send me the stems because Hollow was like, he was like, man, 
you think we can get all the stems? I said, bro, I'm going to tell everybody to send the stems right now as they send the beats. Mm. So all the homies were sending the stems and, and all of that, man. And we knocked it out, man. It's one of my favorite albums. Man, that's crazy how quick that the turnaround was because the the thing I get between those two is that the craft of like conceptual writing was a real focal point, obviously, on that album. And I feel like that carries over in a different way, though, on uh, on Temple, because, yeah, yeah like I, I've been really impressed. I feel like that's been a, an aspect of your your writing that always has been there since I first heard you. But it's just been further kind of getting refined. And I think it shows up here. So, like, talk to me about, like, the main themes or concepts on Temple that you wanted to explore. Oh, man. So, um, I would... How, we, how the thing came about, um, long story short, I was meeting. I, I was meeting with Batman when we were in L.A., Cities of Eve, and I, we had a show. Um, he, um, I hit him up. I was like, yo, I'm in town. Let's link. He, he, he took me to his office. Um, he was playing beats, and, and all the beats that he was playing me, they, they, they were a little different from what I heard him produce. You know what I'm saying? He was just playing loops, and I'm a fan of loops. And so... Um, Anyway, um, so that happened. He was playing those type of those type of feel like almost MF Doomish like. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I I used him as a uh, as an example. I was like, bro, I wanted to be on some like crazy but big shit, but like I can't explain it, bro. I I just had a feeling, right? So anyway, he had. He had these little magazines on that he uses for inspiration for his artistic vision. And it was like pyramids and ninjas and, and things of that nature. And I was like, hmm, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? We just chilling. I'm like, oh, these are, these are dope. And, um, you know what I'm saying? So that happened. So then when I went home, I started thinking more and more of how I wanted to, to build this project and, 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 and the theme around it. And so around this time, um, we were getting all these crazy ass like news reports that in Memphis the water um the river was at its lowest. It broke the record. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. If I'm not mistaken, around this time, um communication was off for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And like it was it was I felt off balance. So one day I called cities, I said, I said, What up, bro? He was like, What's up? I said, Bro, you feel that? He was like, I already, I already know what you're talking about. I was like, yeah, bro, this shit feel a little bit off balance, bro. This ain't, this is beyond Mercury retrograde. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I was like, all right, cool. So I hit him with the title first. I was like, bro, Temple needs water, village needs peace. He, he said, bro, I already know where you're going. So I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So how I came up with the themes is, I don't know if I told you before that um, my grandfather, he created this. African Americans form a new tribal existence, Odyssey like thing. Um, it's called the Fonte Inward Journey, where um, initiates, that's the, the name of the song, mm. the initiates, they come through and they go through these different stages on showing black people where they came from, why they're here, and where they're going. And so, um, I, and my granddad, he, he, he's a co founder of it. And um, I wanted to, like, build a theme around that, but in my way, you know what I'm saying? I was I, around this time. I started like juicing, like as far as like drinking fresh juices. And I started like trying to take better care of myself, which I fuck up every now and then I'm human, but still do. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but anyway, so yeah, so that shit was going on. I was like, okay, I need to create an, I need to create a, a ride, a journey, a odyssey where people can go through different stages and meet different people of the village. I wrote a story before I wrote the album. Um, so I, I wrote a story and I sent it to Batman. I said, Batman, this is what it's going to be about. It was like two paragraphs um, just stating, um, I shortened it as um, a group of people, um, they leave where they're from in search of higher learning and seeking peace, which we're all doing some kind of way through our life. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of wanted to just like, like um, I don't know if you know this, but on each album, I take on a role. Um, so my role on this album was the facilitator, which is mm. why I was the first song. 
so so you 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 uh, you're being introduced to the facilitator, and I got lines like, uh, "Can't travel down your pathway for you, but I'll facilitate." And that group that my grand my grandfather um, helped found, um, the leaders are called facilitators because they're guiding people through the Odyssey, through the gauntlets and stuff like that. So that's why I got the facilitator from. So yeah, man, it was just creating a beautiful thing based around village people. I was doing a lot of research on village, even though I knew a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I was like just looking at different African cultures and some of the people that were part of the villages, uh, part of the village and their, their titles. And I kind of wanted to stick with one thing on each song and take a person through a journey meeting these different people, uh, meeting these different people in these different processes. Yeah, that's really fascinating, man. Cause uh and, and yeah, you've you've what I like actually, and I feel why this album resonates with me more than it would from another artist, is that none of this is like out of left field, right? Like none of these themes mm -hmm. are like now you've never touched on them in your life. However, I just yeah. feel like you flesh them out in a way that's yeah. like the most expansive and deliberate yet. And it's like really cool and th and that like i was gonna ask you about like the titles too so that kind of explains it right like the 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 whatever it is it's like you're meeting different yeah. people yeah. learning different like aspects that's really cool like one of the more profound moments i felt was actually one of the skits and where 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 the person is talking about the legacy of disbelief that shit that shit like i think it's either on the intro or the former that... No, 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 no! I'm sorry. That's the that's the song, but that's the skit before a mop. Okay, Amma. okay. Yeah, yeah. That one, man. That was sobering to hear. That like just like, mm, yeah. That really. Remember fucked I told with you. Me. Remember I told you that all my albums are connected. Yeah. So that would connect that back to something like permanently blackface. Oh, I got the same what vibe, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is making shit. Yeah. yeah. So like, so yeah, man. Um, when I heard that, it, it kind of messed me up. I mean, because that essentially is true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I mean, all of this stuff. The reason we were taken from where we were, where we were, from our habitat, is because we could do all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, we can make we can make where we are right now a better place, which we did. You know what I'm saying? And and. They have to realize sooner or later, even though everybody knows, I don't think people publicly let it be known. It's always in the back of people's heads. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But no one is going to ever come out right and say, hey, this shit was built and a lot of this shit started because of these beautiful people that were removed and taken as prisoners on fucking boats. You know what I'm saying? It's the legacy of this release, seriously. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like every, a lot of, uh, most things, I won't say most things because I don't know everything, but a lot of things that I know, I mean, come on, man. A black person has some, a black, a black being is part of it a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's dope. And I, and so in the story that I wrote, I, um, I let it be known that everybody is welcome. All colors, um, all thoughts, ideas are welcome. But please let it be known that this was created by those with melody. Mm -hmm. And as long as you know that and you respect that, we're going to respect you and we're going to allow you in. The only thing we ask ask for is that you hold your weight. What do you have to offer? We got, we got, we got the farmers. We got the servicemen. We got the facilitators. We got... We got the people that we're trying to bring over the threshold, the initiates. We got places like the cleansing where you can go into this hut and you can release all the fucked up toxins and things like that. What can you do? You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of how a village thrives. People they chip in. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like if if we more if, if everybody in the world, you know what I'm saying, specifically let me just speak, yeah, in the world, but specifically where I am. Memphis in the United States, if, 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 if we could somehow, the village aspect was removed once our names were stripped. 
You, you know what I'm saying? Because a name is essential and, and, and is, is important to where you come from and in the ways that, that that you come from and the things that you do. So when he when we got over here our names were stripped, we're fucking lost. So I felt like if we could take this shit back to the village, to the source, that all of this shit would be beautiful. You know what I'm saying? All colors. Because we are a village. You know mm. what I'm saying? The hum us as humans, we are a village. So if we take the time out and stop being selfish and stuck in our own ways and 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 and, and, and our past histories that sometimes ain't really even got nothing to do with the motherfuckers that's here now. You know what I'm saying? Just because your great grandfather did something, don't mean you have to carry that legacy on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can we can change it up, man. So, and I know I got a lot of white friends. So you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of white homies. So it was just like I wanted to make an album for everybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, I hope I'm, I'm answering your question. No, you are. No, that's great context. And like, <laughs> okay. I think, um, I think what you and, and Real Batman did here was like, it's like you almost throughout the album were like painting a react, like an alternate reality or what could be, like a vision of what could be and very aspirational, but also very real of like, you know, spiritual health. What would that look like in, in the community? And that brings me to the burial because... That I feel is, to me at least, like That's my favorite song. Like, it's mine too. Yeah, it's the emotional centerpiece <laughs> I feel for this album, and it kind of like really sums up what I was just describing and what you've been saying. Because like, especially towards like the ending part of the the very long verse that you have here, you say you know you're kind of like describing this idea of like, I almost I was really there's so many like details of it that I found really interesting. One was like the way you were framing everything it was like past tense almost it's like it's like you already you went through this process and now you kind of have like this knowledge of self take hold and you're putting into words what this vision would look like and it's just uh like i remember like i i I'd listened to the album by this point like a lot but i remember i was at the gym and i just think i finally like fully clicked what you were saying on that verse because for a while to be honest i was just amazed with the beat and, and it was kind of almost hard not to just like focus on that because it's like that's also maybe my favorite beat yeah tell me about the vision of that specific song because i i was just so blown away by it the burial man um i have a line in that song that sums it up this is my higher self i put the lower in the burial beautiful ceremonial on to the next embryo my children burying all the fucked up shit that I have inside me that can prevent me from being a good person, good father, good husband, and things of that nature. Because once we, it, it, it ties it back into why well, look up God's in the mirror. It, it is like I was painting an alternate reality, but it being reality, because the metaphor of the album is all about this. Because um, the, the mountain, the mountain is a metaphor for the brain, the mountaintop. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the burial, the burial was just me getting simply me getting rid of um genocide and mm. and and all the all the um the things that could hinder a person for from being their higher self you know what i'm saying uh, and i just detailed it beautifully i like to think you know what i'm saying and and um yeah man that's it's it's always how me and batman um we would we we weren't arguing like pissed at each other but like he he would change shit on that joint. I'd be like, bro, you don't understand, bro. This is my favorite song. However, I wrote it the way it was written purposely. Like when I said certain lines, it's because of the beat. The beat mm -hmm. changed right here, so I wanted it to fit that change. You know what I'm saying? That's how in tune I was in, for that song because man, I I really meant that shit, Rohan, bro. It's just like I'm in a place in my life where I can only correspond effectively. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time for the for the foolishness. I mean I have I have I have kids. All the past shit and past traumas that I that I that I still deal with, I have to work on those because I say I say that I say it in every interview. You can pass that stuff down. You know what I'm saying? And and the kids will, will, will take grasp of it and don't even know what it is. Yeah. And then it'll enter in them. And you know what I'm saying? They'll take that in and then they'll grow up and then they'll start 
doing things that I did and playing back like, oh shit, that's what that was, or this is what this is, this is why I feel like this. I don't. I, I mean, I know my kids are, um, and other kids are gonna have those questions because the proper way to go through life is by asking questions. But if I can help myself in order to help them on their journey, on their road, because I tell my son all the time, like I say, yo, can I can show you your road, but I can't walk down it for you. But best believe I'm right there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But this is you. You know what I'm saying? This is you. This is all you. I'm just your God. You know what I'm saying? So if I can bury all the the the, the shit that's buried deep inside of me, I mean, the sky is the limit. I mean, the sky, no, the sky is not the limit. You know what I'm saying? We can go beyond the sky or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Into the ether. So it's just like, I just want to, I just wanted to paint a song where I could release toxins on it, but it sound beautiful. And the person, the listener, the person that's listening, they feel the same way. I think you succeeded. Cause like, I think, there was also really interesting. This is something that is a in a few different moments on this album, like some interesting decisions. Like that beat, that instrumental plays for a good solid, like almost three minutes. I feel just just the instrumental, and it it really does feel like you went through some kind of cleansing, and you're just well. There's another song called Cleansing, but you go through some spiritual it's kind of right awakening. Before it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and... no, 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 no. It's not. I'm sorry. I don't even know my track listing. But I feel you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the point is, is like, and that was really intentional, and I loved it because, uh. But but again, it, it was a common, uh, a more common thing on this album, and I found it fascinating because the blueprint for this album sonically is just like, again, I felt feel regal. It feels like you're really in like the the influences that you're grabbing from uh different parts of the world. Like it's it's like in the drumming very consistently drumming very specific types it's definitely not the typical real bad man sound which he has versatile in his own right but this is like much different like i know some i know some some people who are familiar with real bad man and uh came to expect it and and i had this album before it dropped and i'm like man they're like yeah i hope this is good i hope they work out and they're like i'm not sure how they'll they'll mix and i'm like man this is not even like just forget what you heard from real Batman before. Like, this is like nothing I've ever heard here him make. Like, uh, and that's a compliment because yeah. I love his other shit too. But man, this is his best work. Like, oh my god! And and then you, obviously it's it's <laughs> elevated by like these instrumentalists that you employed here, which were really fascinating. Adrian Utley, Preston Crump, Shabaka Hutchings, to name a few here. Like, uh, how did those players work with real Batman and yourself to? to craft these instrumentals and what you were going for sonically. I wish bad man was here. Um, that was all him. He, he reached out to each individual. Um, so as far as production, I, as far as production, I had to let go of those reins because I'm a producer as well. And that's why originally, um, bad man and I, we wouldn't clash, but we would have little bumps in the road because we're both, we like to be in control. I don't know if he's ever worked with a rapper that's also a producer and super hands-on with the art. Um, yeah, he mostly does work with, much- he worked with Young Morpheus. I think that's the one that comes to mind that he also produces. Yeah. But most of the time, it's you like a I mean? lyricist, truly, only, like Boldy yeah. or, you know, other folks. It, it, yeah. yeah, so, so, um, I had to kind of let go, Rohan, and let him do, do his thing. You know what I'm saying? And he would he would always call me and text me and let me know, yo, I want to get Shabaka playing the flute on the burial, uh, or or like let's use Initiates for an example. Um, he was like that was the last song I I wrote um, because he he said he wanted like something that had a little bit more drum and oomph to it. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me see what space I could carve out. And, and it kind of worked out perfectly because the initiates is one of the most important parts of the thing because that's the people who are coming and seeking what's going on up here. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Billy Woods and I, um, in our own ways, 
you know what I'm saying, we would do two different standpoints, two different voices, explaining where we come from, you know what I'm saying, and what we're trying to get to. But that song had everybody on it, and that was his idea. That was Batman. Batman was like, man, we need to get Adrian on here. We need to get uh, Preston on here and Shabaka. It'll be just crazy, you know what I'm saying? What I think they added was that that live aspect that makes the album a little bit more bigger. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It makes it a little bit more bigger. And I also like that they were able to do what they wanted to do because that was very important to me when he was saying that he wanted to reach out to people. So when I feature with people and I bring people on, I don't really have any expectations. Like, I just like, yo, I reached out to you, so I want you to do you. You know what I'm saying? Whenever I'm featuring with people. And I felt like when I when he was sending the demos, he was allowing that to happen. You know what I'm saying? Especially on songs like The Burial where Preston is plucking the shit out that bass line. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, God damn, this reminds me of some um, Motown fucking... I forgot that bass player, man. Um, I think his name was like James or something like that, where they, they, they told stories of like he would be drunk as hell and being like the Temptations laying on the floor playing the bass. You know what I'm saying? And And, and it came out crystal fine and clear and and when he was plucking that bass man i was just like jesus you know what i'm saying it took the song up you know what i'm saying to get a lot it took it further up you know what i'm saying so man shout out to and shabaka so at the time i don't know what's going on now but at the time um like a song like the shaman we couldn't find a feature for it so i was like all right, cool. I said, yo, how about we have Shabaka feature as the sax? Like, I don't know another artist that, another rapper lately that has done that, like feature another sax. And like the sax has his own verse. And then I come right in like it's a rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that was, I was like, I mean, he picked up the sax. At the time, he was done with sax. So we supposedly supposedly have the last sax of Shabaka because wow. he was said to retire the sax. That's what Batman told me. So, yeah, man, everything that they did on there, man, Shabaka, Adrian, man, I mean, Portishead, you know what I'm saying? Like, just the name itself, but I mean, yeah, you know he gonna come in and do his thing. He gonna, he gonna pluck that electric guitar and he's gonna sound fucking amazing, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? Everything, everybody that was involved in the album, they didn't do anything but make it go up further. You know what I'm saying? It took it further up. You know what I'm saying? So shouts out to those brothers, man. They made the album feel like it was like a living, breathing organism. Like that's how I, yep. I, I would take it because it those those wrinkles are so important because like the 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 foundation of real Batman sound is still here, but like like the facilitator. Yeah, we mentioned burial, the cleansing. That's like also maybe one of my favorite beats on there. Like these are just like some of the most pretty, like scenic. Like it looks like the cover. Like it's a really nice, like just truly like beyond beautiful fantasy world type sound. Like it's just like unbelievable. And the the live instrumentation is 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 important. It, it's 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 funny. Like uh, really reminds me of the same kind of obviously way different album, way different kind of tones, but the same kind of way the live instrumentation elevated this i do feel like it elevated that latest arm and hammer album just because of like how just how like in the more modern sample based hip-hop world right yeah yeah like it's very creative ways i feel like people are starting to find creative ways to bring live instrumentation back into the fold and it's uh yeah that's cool it's important yeah when you think of village, when you think of village people, when you think of stuff like that, what are they doing around the fire? They're playing live fucking instruments, drums. They don't have a radio. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they don't have an MPC, Fruit Loops, and all of that. You know what I'm saying? They they out there playing the drums with their hands. Some of them got, um, they make instruments out of nature. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's very important to start incorporating live instrumentation if you can yeah and so, yeah and, and having worked with, with real bad man now on this project like 
he what impressed you the most about just generally how he approaches his craft? Oh man, that man's a genius. Um, what impressed me most, he didn't give in to me being. I was trying to really control it, right? And he basically made me trust him, and I don't trust a lot of people with 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 my art. I was more impressed. I was super impressed the way he was able to make me feel comfortable. His 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 technique and skills are out of the world anyway. You know what I'm saying? And I learned, Hollow and myself, we learned so much working with him, relinquishing control. You know what I'm saying? Things of that nature. Like um, like the sounds and things of that nature. Um, yeah, man, he, he just, he was able to make me feel comfortable and I usually don't feel like that when I'm not yeah no that's that's really cool and because I can tell obviously like you're the type of person that puts a lot of intentional thought into what you create so to actually allow someone to give you to like allow someone to actually do something with your art and have such an impact like I'm sure that's not easy for you to like just give it up like that and and trust someone so that's that's special and yeah you know man. You know, on that topic of like the collaborative aspect a bit more, um, you you had some great features on here, although sparingly the rap features delivered in addition to the instrumentalists. You got the Stooky brothers and um man, that that verse, uh those verses on uh is it called is it pronounced the Ama? The Ama? The Ama, yeah. The Ama. Yeah. So, you know, so crazy. It's an acronym for, crazy. It's a, it's an acronym for for artist, merchant, architect. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you get to meet these different people. That's why Dana on the first verse is talking about the art standpoint of it. And he actually does art. You know what I'm saying? Jay Royal represented the merchant. You know what I'm saying? These are people that I that I saw um they would come up and the village people uh, when I would search what 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 titles or what what jobs do people have as village people? So, you know what I'm saying? You have the artist, you have the merchant, and then I was the architect, because I, you know what I'm saying? Which is um, in relations with the facilitator. You know what I'm saying? So I just changed my title because, like, my granddad, he's one of the lead facilitators on the Odyssey, but he also created what's going on around here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was, that, that was my take on the architect. And, man, like, they, they delivered, like, that, that Diener. Uh, line about the what's the psychological effect of having art that on the wall that don't even look oh, like God. you like wow yeah. like and and i just yeah I, they really impressed me and then you have fucking woods as you mentioned here and yeah. speaking speaking for myself here like it just truly felt just on face value before even pressing play and hearing the song i was just really happy you guys collaborated because you mentioned it earlier like there's such a natural kind of world and like uh wavelength you guys operate on you're different artists different perspectives but you both really have a fascination and in and 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 put an emphasis on history in your music yeah. and kind of bringing that yeah. perspective so it just made so much sense and obviously like i just like really happy to to see that happen and it turned out fantastic and um and he's one of the upper echelon fitters of today Obviously, it, yeah. It is very, very, very high quality, very, very thought provoking. Um, he's a genius. You mm. know what I'm saying, and what he does. You know what I'm saying. So when the when it when the feature presented itself through Batman, I was like, hell yeah, get him. Like it makes sense. You know what I'm saying. So shout out to that brother, man. He he's a dope MC. Um, I see what he's doing. I respect what he's doing and hopefully we can work more. Yeah. I would love to see that. And like, I imagine yeah. just like the recognition, getting a, uh, we're getting to work with someone like woods, but also, you know, these instrumentals, instrumentalists we mentioned earlier, like how did that, how does recognition in a moment like this feel for you? Because it really does feel like this is like a, a special moment in your career up till date, at least. I don't know, Rohan. I'll be honest with you because I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up. I got one more song on the next album that I'm trying to release this year. 
So it's just like um, I haven't set in the response energy just yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I want to wait. That type of album, um, you had it for a while, but that type yeah. of album, yeah, you can listen to it and vibe and see and realize that, yo, this is a groove. Oh, he's saying this, he's saying that. But, yo, you really have to sit with that album. I judge. You know what I'm saying? I find new shit when I listen to it. And I'm mm-hmm. not just being, I'm not being cocky or conceited. Like, whether it be instrumental-wise or some crazy shit that I said, because, man, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but I'll get in these, like, little writing trans- trances, and, and I don't, it just comes out. You know what I'm saying? And um, sometimes I go back and be like, yo, what the fuck did I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and things like that. So um, it's one of those albums I don't mind like people like sitting with for a minute because at the end of the day, I think that'll be better for for the for the listener and for the listener's soul because I'm really trying to tap in with their souls on this album. Yeah, I I feel you because like I said, that moment when I was at the gym with the burial, like that was listen has to be twenty five at the point. Like it wasn't early on in the process, and I loved yeah. it. It was one of my yeah. favorites, but it didn't like hit on that level until I kind of realized it and it clicked. And and yeah, I totally agree. And I just feel like this album's like just sh- you're really like going all in, shooting for the stars, and yeah. um, you know something that I feel is really cool about this album is that it's really talking with about some like heavy themes and this and that but man this is really listenable and almost like a light it's a very light listen which is a weird thing given the topics like it it, it doesn't feel like a drag doesn't feel really draining like some really good art can be because it's just really serious and dark and i don't get that from this album and one of the reasons is the instrumentals as we mentioned but also the songwriting and the fact that there's a lot of sung hooks on this record, which is something you're you you really dabbled in a lot on this album, and I think it sounded amazing. Like, what sparked the Appreciate impetus you. to like sing more hooks and the more kind of progressive songwriting? Man, I just wanted to show people that this shit not sweet, man. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to let them know, like, yo, hooks. I can do hooks. I know people like I saw I saw it. I, yo, I wish he'll do hooks. He might can't do hooks and all of that. That was me being an MC, just letting them know, like, man, I choose not to do hooks. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, I started off singing. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted, I wanted to like each album. I want to show something new if I can. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with the instrumentation and um, the, the shit that Badman was producing and the messages that I was trying to get to, um, the messages that I was trying to get across to the people. I said, yo, I can't be rough and rugged on here. I have to, I gotta be soft almost. You know what I'm saying? But not soft to the point where it's like weak, but mm-hmm. you know, um, it's give vulnerable. Them some soul, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, vulnerable. Give them some soul and, 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 and make sure when Hollow is mixing it that those sonics pierce the ears. You know what I'm saying? That's why I like how crystal clear, crystal clear it sounds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that was just, I wanted to show off my singing ability. I had my moms in the studio with me on some of those joints just coaching. I was like, all right, mom, what's the harmony to this? And so she'll give me the harmony. I'll go back in there and do it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Everything was all me, man. And um, I, I had fun doing it, man. So I'm glad that people, um, that was a fear of mine, too. I'll be honest, singing. Yeah. I'm, I'm such an MV. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, that could be frowned upon, yeah. you know what I'm saying, singing and rapping, but I feel like I did it in a way where it was like, oh, Kendrick Lamar featured Sir on a song, you know what I'm saying, like, so, yeah, it was dope, man, I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, I mean, the the singing on, like, the facilitator especially, that's, like, probably one of my favorite, like, and that, and those hooks are just getting in my head, which is... It's just a nice kind of added wrinkle. I remember speaking to to Ross actually like early 2021 when I was first kind of like like connecting with you guys and he was saying that same thing like man he's she should, I I'm always pushing him try to do some more hooks. He's actually good at them. He just just do more of them and uh that's yeah. been a steady growth. I think why look up was a big a big step in that direction 
just generally yeah. having more like structured hooks and then now with the singing it's it's really really fascinating to see that growth so i'm curious about you mentioned this upcoming project like what what just to look in the future now what else are you working on that people can be looking out for soon i'm finishing up the static album static and myself um we're finishing up an album and i'm about to start the preservation album so you have a preservation yeah. album i think i don't know if i maybe yeah. heard that and forgot or maybe whoa okay because static i was aware of and that's gonna be yeah. sick yeah but you got preservation album too okay yeah, that's like talk about like a perfect marriage like just off of yeah like your his influences the music he likes to work with sample wise like yeah very wow that's crazy God damn, I love it. I'm so happy. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, so this um this static joint is going to fuck them up because I don't want to give too much, but, yo, it's, every album is connected. That's all I can say. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, like, I was up in the clouds on this one. And we all know to get people to meet, to get people to meet, to get people to meet you where you are, you got to sometimes come where they are. But, you know what I'm saying, if you're going to do that, you got to do it in your way, and it got to be fly. So, you know what I'm saying, like, it's it's it's, it's a crazy joint. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm actually tonight, actually in an hour, I'm going to the studio to, to put the finishing touches on everything. Wow. So, yeah. what's the What's the timelines for these projects, do you think? I don't know just yet, but if I can, I'm going to push all three of them out this year. Wait, wait, what's um, the th what's the third one? So static preservation. The temple. Oh, okay, Batman. okay, I yeah, push. Okay, the temple. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, my, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, so okay, that's man, one. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, two for sure, but hopefully I can get this static joint out in the late summer. Mm. You know the way you're man, describing so. the static project, it makes me seem like it's gonna be like you're saying you're in the clouds. Maybe you're like gonna be a little more like confrontational i don't know i'm I'm getting some 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 assumptions here i'm liking it i'm, I'm excited oh man it's yeah. it's it's, it's, a bit, it's gonna be themed as well um it's yeah man that joint it's it's come together very beautifully and um yeah man so yeah that's what i'm doing man i'm trying to i'm trying to stay busy man reach um doing these producer rapper uh, projects and like be, be be very particular on which ones I work with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, Static is a legend. Preservation is a legend. They're both ill. They love hip hop to life. And like the conversation, you know what I'm saying? And like, cause how it happened with me and Static was the song that was on his, um, his album before yeah. the Bomb B one. I came out the booth. He was like, all right, cool. You burnt that down. Now I'm, I'm gonna just give you some beats, and we are gonna do something. All right, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, me and Preservation, man. Uh, when I met him, when he came here with Erica Badu and Yasin Bay, um, I went backstage and we talked about it real brief. You know what I'm saying? And then I kind of followed up. Um, he was following up too, and and we're fine. He he just got done um, doing the. Um, was it the L. Leon joint with Crime Album? Yeah. He just got done with that joint, and he just repressed his um his instrumentals for the Billy Woods album he did. Um, yeah, Atheops. Yeah. Uh, Atheops, yeah. yeah. And so, like, um, he's he's taking care of all the stuff he needs to take care of um, on his end. He sent me, like, two tracks already, which are fucking insane. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I'm finishing up this last little piece of static. And then I'm jumping right into that, man. And then, yeah, I already got the titles and everything. Okay. So. Shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so pumped. Like, uh, yeah, Preservation is one of my favorite producers, period. Static's really, like, I, I really feel like those are some good connections for you. I think those, like, really make sense creatively. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, as for now, though, just keeping it to the present, this record's amazing. Like, I'm just going to ended off by saying that because easily going to be in the should be in all album of the year discussions will be in my album of the year discussion and 
Yeah, and I can say that having, like you said, like I had a chance to have this album since last year. So I've been listening to this album a ton, like different contexts, gym, chilling at home. Like I, I didn't, I never, I never actually had the chance to share this with you, but the the moment you like Ross sent me the email with like the advance to this, it was like, it was literally within an hour after I broke up with my last ex-girlfriend and I went on a walk and just try to clear my head and I got I just was on my phone and I got that email and I swear to you I felt like it was a the one of the most beautiful days in like I don't know like early September end of August and I was sitting by the water and I was like looking at the email that I was like oh shit there's a two new Luca album advance that's awesome I felt so <laughs> blessed I just felt like literally it was this and some other person another artist like sent in advance or something I was just like I feel like someone is like helping me out. It's like, man, you need this. Like, just you need a jump. You need a boost here. And it was like exactly the kind of album I needed at that time. So I've been like, it's been really appreciated and uh, just super happy with all the growth and and the quality of this work. This is fantastic. So thanks for coming on the show. Honestly, thank you so much, brother. Man, I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Um... And I mean, I'm excited yeah, to see you in uh, in Toronto. Like, definitely, like, let's link up. That's gonna be awesome. Can't wait to see you perform. All right, stay late, bro. Yeah, I get at you, family. Yeah, thank you for having me on the show, bro. Yeah, always. Anytime. It's always love, man. Yeah, Back. anytime, man. Yeah, won't be the last. Stay here, man. Yeah. All right, be peace, bro. Yeah, peace. So there we have it, another episode of the Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV. I hope this episode gave you some new perspectives and insights into what the greatest art form known to man in hip-hop music has to offer. If you want to support the show in the most meaningful way possible, it would be my absolute honor to have you as a patron in the new Rap Music Plug podcast Patreon. Through this Patreon, you will be getting exclusive content such as bonus episodes, exclusive album recommendations, exclusive playlists, early access to episodes, and more. And above all though, you will be able to support the show directly in a way that will not only justify the crazy amount of time I spend on this show already, but allow me to cover some of the expenses related to supporting all of these great artists that we cover on the show through the website and will allow us to sustain and build on this amazing growth that the RMPP has experienced recently. So if you have any questions about any of the Patreon stuff or just want to keep tabs on the show, interact with me on rap music and all the great stuff that we can talk about, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Rap Music Plug Pod or shoot me an email at QLCTV dot podcast at gmail.com you can also rate and review the show on apple podcasts and subscribe on youtube and spotify as well but that's enough self-promotion for this episode i hope you enjoyed it peace